In this presentation, I want to highlight a very intuitive and honest discussion from one of our day's leading developmental and cell biologists, Alfonso Martinez Arias. The excerpt comes from a public discussion Professor Arias had with Kurt Jaimungal on his YouTube channel, Theories of Everything with Kurt Jaimungal. The link to the full video can be found in the description below and it is recommended that you take the time to watch the full video. Let us first discuss some background to the speaker in this excerpt. Alfonso Martinez Arias is a renowned developmental biologist. He is currently an ICRIA research professor in the Department of Systems Bioengineering at the Universidad Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona. He is also the group leader of the Martinez Arias group at the Department of Genetics, University of Cambridge. His research interests include cell fate decisions, signal transduction, embryonic stem cells, self-organization, and the physics of biology. In addition to his research, he is the co-author of the biology textbook Principles of Development, which was awarded the Royal Society of Biology Book Prize. He has also made significant contributions to the field of developmental genetics, with numerous publications to his name. The excerpt that follows is part of a truly amazing discussion that covers a wide range of aspects of Professor Arias's specialist field. Not only does it delve into the concept of genetic determinism in much detail, but it also focuses on what the true unknowns are within the Darwinian field. In this excerpt, he cautions about what a typical outlook, like the kind of determinism that Richard Dawkins promotes, might lead to if it is not considered within a more nuanced sphere of inquiry. Let us review this, and then I will discuss how this leading professional's informal discussion has illuminated the lay ideas presented in my attempt to make sense of the Darwinian mechanistic outlook, as I describe it within my book, The Science of Agency. These ideas from Professor Arias certainly made me excited about the future of our emerging age, where the science of agency allows us to find a better future. A better future that elevates our scientific investigation through the return of that original neutrality that started our modern scientific revolution. When scientists expected to find transcendence anywhere and everywhere in the universe. History. It's a very interesting thing. If we had time, we could get into our history and, and an evolutionary history and how we are just, we carry so much baggage hmm. from our evolutionary history. And, and that's a fascinating thing. But the appearance of bones, for example, that's that's a very all of a sudden. You, I mean, this is the thing about Dawkins. I always say that if, if, if life was what Dawkins would like it to be, I think we would all be viruses and bacteria because all you need is DNA replicating itself and, and, and finding... I, I think that, that something, something happened that when cells were invented, particularly the eukaryotic cell, something happened. A creative ability was unleashed that we are just trying to understand. And I find that very, very interesting, uh, particularly that transition from unicellularity to multicellularity. I think it's, it's right now a very, a very big and interesting problem. And then the, the appearance of the... This excerpt makes such an exciting reference that completely supersedes the superficial concept of the selfish gene that was made popular by Richard Dawkins in his crusade against all teleological outlooks. I urge you to follow the link in the description to evaluate the deep insights discussed by Professor Arias. It is such a refreshing view where the potential of research is put back into a far more neutral position where you only look at the phenomenon 
and make no judgment about whether it had purely mechanistic origins or if there might have been some agency involved. It even looks at the realities surrounding the extraordinary event where single-celled organisms started cooperating as multicellular organisms. To me, that constitutes a truly scientific outlook on the way the world works, where you are allowed to suspend your commitment to purely mechanistic processes and assess structures as the product of agency. It is therefore extremely important for us to be able to identify agency in a world where materialistic dogmas have been enforced to the exclusion of any kind of agency. For this purpose, we can investigate causation the way Thomas Aquinas did. Thomas Aquinas, building on Aristotle's framework, identified four types of causes in his philosophy. These causes are used to explain the existence and nature of things in the world. Material cause. This refers to the substance or matter out of which something is made. It answers the question of what something is made of. For example, the material cause of a statue might be the marble or bronze from which it is sculpted. Formal cause. This refers to the form or essence of something which gives it its shape and defines its nature. It answers the question of what something is. For instance, the formal cause of a statue is the shape or design that the sculptor intends to create. Efficient cause. This is the cause that brings something into existence. It answers the question of how something comes to be. In the case of the statue, the efficient cause is the sculptor who carved the marble or bronze. Final cause, or telos. This is the purpose or end for which something is made. It answers the question of why something is made. For the statue, the final cause might be to beautify a space or to honor a person. Aquinas applied these four causes in various combinations. The material cause, the formal cause, the efficient cause, and the final cause. He applied these four causes to both natural and agent causation to explain their existence and purpose comprehensively. Now we can ask, when will an inference of agency be warranted? It will be warranted when mechanistic probabilities are exceeded. Let us evaluate this. Non-teleological nature constrains outcomes to specific mechanistic probabilities. When these probabilities are exceeded, meaning the observed outcomes fall outside the bounds of what the available probability space for non-teleological mechanisms would predict, the inference of agency becomes the only rational conclusion. In a non-teleological framework, Nature operates according to laws and principles that do not involve purpose or intention. These natural processes follow mechanistic probabilities, providing a predictable range of possible outcomes based on the initial conditions and governing laws. For instance, the behavior of particles in physics, the chemical reactions, and the principles of the conservation of energy all adhere to such non-teleological, mechanistic constraints. Mechanistic probabilities outline the expected outcomes based on natural laws, offering a statistical range within which events can reasonably occur. For instance, the probability for single-celled organisms to be mechanistically more probable to survive in any competition for resources in any environment. 
these probabilities are derived from empirical data and mathematical models, allowing scientists to predict the likelihood of various outcomes. When observed events align with these predictions, the non-teleological explanation remains robust. However, when observed outcomes significantly deviate from these mechanistic probabilities, for instance, when we do see many multicellular organisms, each with a much lower probability to win any resource competition in any suitable environment against single-celled organisms, then those very low probability events, it suggests the presence of factors beyond non-teleological mechanisms. If an event's occurrence lies far outside the predicted probability space, it challenges the sufficiency of natural laws to account for the observed phenomena. In such cases, the concept of agency, an intentional influence or cause, becomes a more plausible explanation. With this mechanistic statistical method, agency can be identified, even without knowing any details about the agent involved. Agency implies a purposive action by an agent with properties which can be inferred from the artifact, capable of influencing outcomes in ways that non-teleological processes cannot. When the probabilistic boundaries of mechanistic explanations are surpassed, considering agency provides a coherent alternative that accounts for the observed deviation. This inference is not made lightly. It emerges from a thorough analysis of the available data and the recognition that natural mechanisms alone cannot explain the anomaly. This request for neutrality in the science of agency is not an argument from ignorance or incredulity. It is an attempt to acknowledge the need for neutrality that Professor Alfonso Martinez Arias discussed in his critiques against genetic determinism and awe-inspiring new field of investigation into the mechanisms at play in the novelties found in multicellular organisms. The most convincing support for this request for neutrality is instead grounded in the reasoned analysis presented by Thomas Nagel in, in Mind and Cosmos. Why the materialist neo-Darwinian conception of nature is almost certainly false. Nagel posits that certain features of the universe, particularly consciousness, intentionality, and value, cannot be satisfactorily explained by reductive materialism. He argues that the persistence and regularity of these features suggest an inherent teleological aspect to nature. This approach is not based on a lack of understanding, but on a critical examination of the limitations of mechanistic explanations. It is based on Nagel's severe criticism of reductionist materialism, as well as Alvin Plantinga's evolutionary argument against naturalism. By identifying specific instances where non-teleological mechanistic probabilities are exceeded, this argument aligns with Nagel's perspective that natural teleology is a necessary component of a comprehensive understanding of the cosmos.